Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please mute yourselves. Mute yourselves, everybody. We're about to start now. I'm just going to get... Um, if the guest speaker is online, can you unmute yourself, please? Yeah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa barakatuh. Please mute yourself. Mute yourselves, everybody. We're about to start now. I'm just going to get... Um, Okay. Can you unmute yourself, please? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can you unmute yourself, please? Can you unmute yourself, please? Yeah, my chairman, I have, I am unmuted. I have unmuted myself. Yes, I've heard you, but we have a technical challenge. We are just having the repeat of the same. Of the same thing. Okay, I've seen it. Oh, okay. Oh. Don't, oh. Don't, don't reply anymore. I can't. Yes, I've heard you. So we have a technical challenge. We are just having the repeat of the same of the same thing. Okay, I've seen it. Okay. Oh. Okay. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. Um, we apologize this morning for the technical glitch. Uh, let me just go straight to introducing the guest speaker for today. Dr. Bashir Ali Umar was Salam born in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. Um, we apologize this morning for the technical glitch. No. Uh, let me just go straight to introducing the guest speaker for today. Dr. Bashir Ali Umar. Um, we apologize. Um, we Inshallah, we will uh, fix it and we will start. Please just bear with us. Well, we just have this recording and um, um, we apologize. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I think we found um, a way to make it work and start the meeting. Profound apology. Technology is um, acting up on us. Alaji, Dr. Bashir Ali Umar was born in Kanu and started his education career in Amadou Bello University in electrical engineering before going to the Islamic University in Medina where he, studied, where he studied Islamic studies with specialization in the sciences of Hadith up to doctorate level. And I mean. He studied Maliki mm -hmm. fiqh, fiqh and Yusuf under traditional ulama in both Medina and Nigeria. He has served as a permanent commissioner in the Kanu State Sharia Commission and later as special advisor to the Central Bank of Nigeria on non-interest banking. Please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. We are hearing He represented the CBN, the Technical Committee of the Islamic Financial Services Board, and he was the chairman 
of the IFSB Working Group that developed the IFSB standard on risk management for Takafu undertakings. He is currently a member of the Sharia Committee of the International Islamic Liquidity Management Corporation. There's so much more that he has done. I will leave all that, given the time that we have spent, so that he can just give us his um, presentation today. Thank you very much. Um, Sheikh, if you can hear me, yes. the floor is yours, or the platform is yours. Thank you very okay. much. You're most welcome. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa sayyati amalina. Man yahdihi allahu falamudilla lah. Wa man yudlil falahadiya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. ومن سار على نهجه واكتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم uh, Dear brothers and sisters uh, starting with the uh, host with our host uh, my chairman Mr. Fola Adiola uh, <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I will start by uh, giving <laughs> thanks to Allah wa ta the Most High, the Most Merciful, for lengthening, uh, for engaging our lives to witness yet again another of the Ramadan lectures organized by our eminent brother, Mr. Fola Adiola. Uh, we are indeed most grateful to Allah for giving us a long life and also keeping our religion, keeping us on the path of our religion. The Prophet wasallam said, the best of you is the one who has a long life and has righteous deeds. May Allah make us among them. Uh, next, I will express also my thanks to the host and organizer of these lectures. Uh, Mr. Fola Adiola, for yet again inviting me to participate and uh, 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 interact with noble brothers and sisters in this forum once again. Uh, Jazahullahu Khaira. The topic that uh, I'm going to speak on is obtaining the Rahmah of Allah, that is uh, Tahseel Rahmatillah obtaining the Rahmah of Allah, attaining the Rahmah of Allah and achieving it. Uh, Rahmah is commonly uh, translated as mercy, but in Arabic it's a word that has two parts. One part is gentleness and the other part is goodness. Uh, with regards, that is why, uh, because of these two aspects of Rahma, uh, that is why it is commonly applied to both uh, the Creator Himself, Jalla wa Allah, and also the created beings. Uh, because the uh, the created beings, they uh, they have been given the quality, the attribute of gentleness, and the attribute of goodness. And Allah wa Taala, His own rahma is that of goodness, ihsan, that is being good to His creation. Uh, these, the rahma, the mercy, is among the attributes of Allah wa Taala. Among the names of Allah, the Most High, the names that denote this attribute are. Uh, uh, numerous. There is Ar Rahman, that is the immensely merciful, whose mercy encompasses everything. Then there is among his names also from Rahma, uh, Ar Rahim, the intensely and specifically merciful, with a very vast mercy, but that is restricted to whom he wills. Then there is Ar Hamur Rahimin among his names. 
the most merciful of those who are merciful. Then there is the Rahma, the owner or the uh, the one of mercy, the one who has mercy. And uh, the these uh, all these names they have this attribute. They express the attributes. The names of Allah they normally express the attributes of Allah Tabarak wa Taala. The mercy of Allah Tabarak wa Taala is an attribute of Allah which he has made it incumbent upon himself that he will show mercy. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, Kataba Rabbukum ala nafsihi rahma Your Lord has enjoined upon himself mercy. That is, he has made it out of, this is also out of his mercy, that out of his mercy, he has put it upon himself, an obligation on himself to show mercy to his creation. This is a very immense thing, and this is a very hopeful verse of Allah, verse of the Quran, to show that Allah has made it incumbent upon himself to show mercy to his creation. And uh, the, the mercy of Allah is such that it encompasses everything. As Allah said in the Quran, وَرَحْمَةِ وَسْوِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ And my mercy encompasses everything. And in, uh, when the, an the angels, they also describe their Lord as such. They said, رَبَّنَا وَسِئْتَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ رَحْمَةً وَعِلْمًا فَاغْفِرْ لِلَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَاتَّبَعُوا سَبِيلَكَ Our Lord, you have, you encompass everything in mercy and in knowledge. Therefore, forgive those who repented and followed away and save them and save them from the great punishment. So the angels described Allah's, Allah's mercy as encompassing everything, just like his knowledge encompasses everything. There is nothing that escapes his knowledge. In the same way, there is nothing that escapes his mercy, tabarak wa ta'ala. Now the, uh, the, the, the word itself, Rahma, has been used in different contexts in the Quran. There are things that are identified, that come to identify the mercy of Allah in creation. The one and most important that <clears throat> comes to mind is the uh, the gift of prophethood. Prophethood is a mercy of Allah. Allah wa ta'ala described the prophets among the progeny of Ibrahim, Ishaq and Ismail. Allah says, وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبِ He said, we gave him Ishaq and Yaqub uh, and then he said, وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُمْ مِنْ رَحْمَتِنَا And we gave them, we, we gave them from our mercy. That is prophethood. And he also said regarding Musa alayhi salam, وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُمْ مِنْ رَحْمَتِنَا أَخَاهُ هَارُونَ نَبِيَا We gave him out of our mercy, his brother Harun, to become a prophet. So bestowing the prophethood on a prophet is an immense mercy of Allah because prophethood with regards to the one who is appointed as a prophet is a station that cannot be achieved out of uh, the effort of the human being either through his knowledge or through his good deeds. It is only uh, a mercy that Allah bestows on whom he wills. So that is why on the part of the prophet, prophethood is the mercy that is utmost that any human being, that any human being can achieve in this world. And that is why Allah made this uh, few among his creation. He says, min al -awwalin wa min al -akhirin. There are many from the uh, first communities, because so many prophets have gone before, wa min al -akhirin, and very few among those who came 
uh, later. On the part of those who are not prophets, uh, prophethood is a tremendous mercy of Allah. Mm -hmm. Because it is only through the agency of prophethood that mm -hmm. people will get to know Allah and his attributes and what Allah and also his will from creation. This is something that cannot be achieved through a through, uh, philosophical uh, reflection. This is not something that you can achieve through experimentation. This is not something that you can achieve from history. This is, all, this is something that can only be achieved through the medium of prophethood by Allah uh, declaring himself, making himself known through the prophets, so that human beings, they know him, they know their Lord, they know his attributes, and they know his will in this uh, behind creation. So prophethood is a tremendous mercy that gives uh, salvation. Also, among the usage of prophethood in the Quran is revelation itself. The revelation that Allah reveals to prophets, and especially the revelation of the Quran. The revelation of the Quran, the revelation of the Quran is has been described by Allah as, uh, as a mercy. Allah says in the beginning of Surah to Dukhan, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubaraka, inna kunna munzirin, fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim, amran min indina, inna kunna mursilin, rahmatan min rabbik. He said, we have revealed the Quran in a blessed night. We, uh, we, have, uh, we have never ceased to be warners. And then at the end of the verses about the revelation, he said, Rahmatan min indina, a mercy from us. So the revelation of the Quran is a mercy that Allah wa ta'ala has given to the whole of creation. So connected with this, uh, because the revelation of the Quran, it is a mercy because the Quran is the final revelation that confirms all previous revelations. And it is a revelation that has been protected and it is a source of guidance for human beings so that they will never go astray. This is a mercy from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And in the following from this is that the Prophet himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has been described as a mercy. Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent to you, we have not sent you except for being a mercy to the whole of creation. So the, uh, the prophet himself is a mercy because his, uh, his appointment as a messenger and a prophet of God and the, being the final messenger is a testimony to the mercy of Allah wa Taala and his care and concern and love for creation. Uh, also among the meanings of mercy, of Rahmah in the Quran is rainfall. Rainfall has been described as mercy because it gives life to the earth. It gives life to the earth. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي يُنَزِّلُ الْغَيْثَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا قَنَطُوا وَيَنْشُرُ رَحْمَةً He is the one who brings down relief, sarka, to people after they have lost hope. And then he spreads far and wide his mercy. So the rainfall is the... Uh, uh, is the mercy that is spread by Allah. And he also said, he is the one who sends forth the wind as a uh, bearer of glad tidings. Uh, he is the one who sends forth the winds before uh, uh, he sends the winds as a bearer of glad tidings and giving announcement of the coming of his mercy giving announcement of the coming of his mercy, the mercy that is being uh, alluded to here is the rainfall. So the winds, they are like an indication that rainfall is going to come. Rainfall is described as mercy because it is, it is by the rainfall that uh, life is sustained. It is through rainfall that life is sustained. Allah has created everything from water. So it is the rainfall that brings down water 
and by that token, life is sustained. So that is why he, Allah wa Taala says, "Fandur unzur ila athari rahmatillah." Look at the effects of the mercy of Allah. That is, after the rain has come down, you see the whole earth has turned green. Uh, the I uh, the when people the glance of people brings happiness. When you look around, you see the greenery, and uh, also the sounds of the birds, the sounds of the insects. You see life springing up. That is an indication of the sign of Allah, and that yeah, that is an indication of the mercy of Allah. That He is indeed, He is indeed taking charge and taking care of His creation through the agency of the rainfall. Also, from among the meanings, the uh, the way uh, rahma has been uh, used in the Quran. The protection, uh, the, the protection that Allah gives to people, uh, the protection that Allah gives to His creation, is a mercy. For uh, part of what was mentioned in this aspect is the protection that Allah gave to people that were being terrorized by the Gog and the Magog. They are Juj wa Majuj, and Allah sent uh, Dhul Karnain. And Allah sent Dhul Karnain. Uh, Allah uh, gave Dhul Karnain the power to create a barrier between people and the Gog and the Magog. After completing the barrier, Allah says in the Quran that Dhul Karnain said to them, Hada rahmatun min Rabbi. This is a mercy from my Lord. It is a mercy from Allah because it is it gives protection to people that gives them the freedom to live freely without terror uh, without terrorization from enemies and also the protection of the descendants of the righteous people is also described as a rahma is also described as a mercy allah says regarding the story of musa and khidr uh when he saw uh, a wall that was about to fall down and he repaired it, he rebuilt it to make it upright so that it doesn't fall down. And Khidr explained that why he did that, he said, Ammal jidaru fil Medina. The wall, it belongs to two orphan children who are living in the city. And beneath the wall, there is a treasure that belonged to them. And their great grandfather was a righteous slave. So the your Lord, that is Allah Taala addressing Moses alayhi salam, your Lord wanted that the children will grow up while their wealth is protected. He said, Rahmatam min Rabbi. This is a mercy from your Lord. It was said that this great grandfather of the children was their father with uh, five generations before. But Allah Taala, because of his righteousness, he gave him a rahma. He gave him a mercy that protected not only his direct children, but his great grandchildren. They were protected out of what? Out of the rahma of Allah, out of the mercy of Allah. Also, among the usage of the rahma of Allah uh, in the Quran is uh, the is having the the, the the mercy it is a mercy of Allah to be given uh to be given children given children is described uh as a mercy because when the angels came to give Ibrahim alayhi salam the glad tidings of having a child after reaching old age and after knowing that his wife is barren he says how can he have children uh, why are you giving me the glad tidings of having children when I am in this situation? Then they said, "This is do not. Uh, this is uh, a mercy from. Uh, this is a glad tidings from your Lord. Uh, don't lose hope." He says, "Nobody loses hope in the mercy of the Lord except those who are astray." The mercy that is granted here is the glad tidings that he was given. He will be given a child. Having a child is a mercy 
from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. The also meaning of mercy in use in the Quran uh, is to be saved, to be saved from danger. As uh, deliverance from danger is described as a mercy. Because when Allah wa Ta'ala mentioned sea voyages, traveling in the ocean with the hazards that are there, he said he saved you from that. He saved you from the uh, dangers and the perils of sea travel. And he said, If we had willed, we would have drowned them in the oceans, in the seas. There will be no time for them to shout for help. And they will not be saved. Except that, except for a mercy from us. So the deliverance that we get day in and day out from Allah is also part of the ar rahma It's part of the mercy of Allah. And Allah, Allah, he also mentioned that the alteration of day and night is a mercy from Allah. That is the way Allah has created this planet and put it put us on it, and the physical laws that are governing the uh, our life, the physical laws uh, and the biological laws that are obtaining in the in, on this earth, they are part of the mercy of Allah, because He says Allah wa Taala says, "Wa min rahmatihi jaala lakum layla wa nahar." Part of His mercy. He appointed day and night for you so that you will have rest in the night and you will go out to look for the favor of Allah during the daytime and so that you will be thankful. So, and that is why now we are realizing that anything that will disturb the ecosystem, the climatic pattern of the world the way it is, we are finding out that it is one of the most serious calamities that human beings are facing. Uh, in modern times. Uh, also, among the usages, among the things that are part of the mercy of Allah, as mentioned in the Quran, is that Allah wa Ta'ala, he, he is not prompt in exacting punishment for those who disobey him. He gives respite. He gives respite. He gives chances one and all, uh, again and again. And he is not quick in exacting punishment. This is part of the Rahmah of Allah. Allah has said in the Quran, You are Lord is uh, extremely forgiving. And he is the owner of mercy. If he were to exact punishment on, on them out of the evil action that they committed, he would have been quick in, uh, in, in exacting punishment on them. And then finally, among the meanings of Rahma that has been mentioned in the Quran is what Allah has said regarding the Prophet wasallam, that Allah gave him the qualities of good character. He says this is part of the Rahma of Allah. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنْ Allah says, uh, uh, it is out of the mercy of Allah that you are soft and gentle with the believers. If you were harsh and severe in behavior, they would have scattered away from you. Now, anything that will cause people to turn away and scatter away from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Will bring a lot. Uh, uh, will bring severe loss on people, because they will be the losers. If they turn away from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they are the losers. So it is part of the mercy of Allah that He made the means to make people stick to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and love His company and not turn away from Him, from His beautiful and excellent character. That He made it part of the mercy of Allah so that he will make them to benefit by being in his company. So Allah, wa ta'ala, it is part of the mercy of Allah that he designed the character of the Prophet ﷺ to be a character of mercy 
a character of high moral standards, a character of excellence, so that people will find it easy to interact and live with him and learn from him and take guidance uh, from his sayings and practices and his tacit approvals. Now, now we come to the, uh, the means to obtain the Rahma of Allah, which is the, uh, the central topic of my talk, which is how do we attain the Rahma of Allah? How do we obtain the mercy of Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala. Now, in, in the Quran, so many indications have been given that if you do this, you will receive Allah's mercy. Allah will, have, will show his mercy on you or Allah will make you go into his mercy. The same thing also in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have one or two hadith that show that there are acts that when you do, Allah will show mercy on you. Now the uh, the what comes to uh, the, the among the verses that are general in indicating the means to achieve in the mercy of Allah is what Allah has mentioned in Surah to, uh, in Surah to Ali Imran. Allah says, "Ya ayuhal ladina amanu la taakulu riba abu afan mubaafa wa taqul Allah la allakum tuflihun wa taqul nara lati aiddat lil kafirin." Allah wa Rasul la'allakum turhamun. O you who believe, do not take usury, do not take interest. Multiplying, which is multiplied several fold, and fear Allah that you may receive prosperity. Fear Allah that you may prosper. And fear the hellfire that has been prepared and uh, that has been prepared for those who reject. Allah and his messengers and obey Allah and his and the messenger so that you will have you will receive mercy so that you will have the mercy of Allah now this is the part that I uh, that is uh, relevant to what I am speaking on that is obey Allah and his messenger so that, that you will have the mercy of Allah so obedience to Allah and his messenger is the key to achieving the mercy of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Now this applies not only to individuals, but also to societies and nations, that when we uh, imbibe obedience to Allah and his messenger in our lifestyles, and when we institutionalize obedience to Allah and his messenger in our communities and in our nations, we are going to receive the mercy of Allah with all its various manifestations, which you have mentioned in the beginning of the talk. In ourselves, we imbibe the messenger, the, the obedience to Allah and his messenger by changing our lifestyles to conform to the guidance that Allah has revealed to us through his prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the final messenger. So we obey Allah and we obey the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Obedience to Allah is following the Quran and obedience to the messenger of Allah is following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is what explains the it is what explains the Quran and elaborates what is meant by the Quran. Obedience to Allah and his messenger means changing our lifestyles to and submitting ourselves to the will of Allah in everything that we do. We are after knowing what is the judgment of Allah on this. What is the judgment of the Quran and the Sunnah? What does the Sharia, the way of Allah, what does it say regarding this, our action? Be it actions that are, uh, that are, uh, that pertain to personal hygiene or actions that pertain to worship or actions that pertain to our relationships with our spouses, our relationships with our children, with our kinsmen, with our work fellows, with everything that we do, with our interactions, be they social, economic, or even our political activities, all these, uh, all these aspects of our life, we want to know what is the judgment of Allah. Or be they also what regulate our character, what kind of character 
are we supposed to adopt? What is supposed to be uh, the character that is most loved in the sight of Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? This is imbibing obedience to Allah and obedience to his prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In our society, we work to institutionalize that, to institutionalize obedience to Allah and obedience to his messenger. Which is why during the, uh, that is we, uh, we 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 do our best to see that our society is upright in terms of obedience to Allah and His Messenger that we can achieve through so many uh, means by education, by giving support to what will educate and enlighten people about the uh, about obedience to Allah and His Messenger explaining the rules of Islam, explaining the uh, the judgments of the Sharia, bringing the Sharia near to us so that we know the injunctions of Allah the in, and the injunctions of the Prophet wasallam, and the whole society adopts it, raising children upon this path and adjusting our educational curricula to integrate this aspect that will ensure that our offspring, they grow up having obedience to Allah and obedience to his messenger imbibed in their character, imbibed in their, in their lifestyle. And also part of it in bringing about institutions that will, uh, that will uh, make obedience to Allah and obedience to his messenger realizable in our day-to-day -day lives. And this will mean we where we need uh, institutions that will protect good moral moral standing in the society, we adopt them. Like in uh, like the Hezba, which is uh, an institution that commands what is good and forbids what is evil, or institutions that will facilitate the collection and distribution of zakah to make people able to uphold this cardinal principle, this pillar of Islam easily, like the institutions that will make Hajj to be easily uh, practiced by Muslims. In our economic dealings to create institutions that will ensure Muslims are able to live a life of obedience to Allah and obedience to his messenger in a world where usury and interest has permeated the whole world. And it is not, <clears throat> it is worthy of notice to see that this verse that says, obey Allah and obey his messenger so that you will, you will achieve the mercy or you will get the mercy of Allah. It is revealed just uh, to, uh, in connection within the context of avoiding interest. It is as though Allah Taala knowing that a time will come when interest and usury permeates all our economic activities. But within that environment, we are implored to obey Allah and his messenger, which means we are, in, we are supposed to avoid this permeating uh, scourge that we have, the scourge of usury. And how do we achieve that at the community or at the national level? We do it by bringing institutions that will uh, facilitate for people to deal economically with one another without, uh, uh, within the context of within the precincts of obedience to Allah and his messenger and avoiding dealing in what Allah does not love, dealing in interest. So we establish uh, Islamic financial institutions, Islamic banks, Islamic uh, insurance entities, Islamic uh, capital market entities, so that the essence of obedience to Allah while living in a society is guaranteed for us. And also, we, uh, we ensure that our legal system and our justices, they uphold the principles of justice because upholding the principle of justice and avoiding corruption, and avoiding corruption, especially in the judiciary, is integral to obedience to Allah and obedience to his prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
this uh, principle that guides us, that leads us to achieving the mercy of Allah is, is indeed very, very wide. And itself is a topic of a long talk. But uh, it suffices us to believe, uh, to realize its importance and the context within which Allah wa ta'ala has said, has mentioned it. That is, if indeed we establish obedience to Allah and his messenger, we will receive the mercy of Allah. We will receive the mercy of Allah in all its manifestations, as we have said. Because by establishing obedience to Allah and his messenger, we are going to have the blessings of this world. We are going to have the, the goodness, the goods of this world, and we are going to have salvation in the hereafter. So the meanings and uh, manifestations of mercy, they will be, uh, we will attend them. Just as we are seeing that people who strive to, uh, to consume, to look for halal, to look for what is permissible, to look, of, to look for what is pure in terms of wealth, they not only get the satisfaction of having the blessings of wealth, they also have the excellence, the they, they also the, have the blessings of that wealth in their lives, in the lives of their families, and also in the whole community as a whole. The uh, establishing the obedience to Allah and obedience to his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will also entail all the goals that sensible human beings are after achieving of protecting the environment, protecting the ecosystem, protecting the climatic uh, uh, condition of the earth, because in obeying Allah and in obeying his messenger, we will definitely uh, avoid all acts of mischief and disorder, the acts that bring imbalance to the balance that Allah Taala has created in his creation. So uh, this is central to achieving the mercy of Allah. The next, uh, another thing that has also been mentioned in the Quran that would lead us to achieving the mercy of Allah is uh, taqwa Allah, fear of Allah. Fear of Allah, Allah says uh, in the uh, in Surah Al-Hujurat, he says, "Innama al-mu'minuna ikhwa," the believers, only the believers are brothers to one another. Therefore, make peace and reconciliation between your two brothers. and fear Allah so that you will have mercy. That is fear in Allah, especially when we are dealing with one another, especially in the situations when conflicts arise between two different parties, be they uh, a couple that are in marriage or uh, friends, or associates, or comrades, whoever, or even be they big parties, uh, like, neighbors, like two societies, like two communities. When you observe the fear of Allah in that, definitely mercy will descend upon you, and you will achieve mercy, which is to have unity, to have, uh, uh, to have strength, all of which are part of manifestations of mercy, and also to uh, cleanse yourself of rancor and enmity, things that bring about destruction and weakness uh, in society. Among the <laughs> means that have been mentioned for us to achieve the mercy of Allah <laughs> uh, is listening to the Quran. Listening to the Quran is, uh, Allah has says, it brings mercy to people. Allah says, وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْصِتُوا لَأَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ When the Quran is being recited, then listen to the recitation and be silent so that you will, so that you will receive mercy. Listening to the Quran is an act of ibadah that brings life to the hearts that brings lives to our spirits, to our souls, because the Quran is itself a spirit. Allah has described the Quran as what gives life. 
wakadhalika au haina ileka ruha min min amrina it is in the same way that we reveal to you a spirit from our from our presence so the quran it re, uh, it leads you it gives you life by listening to it by reciting it even if you don't recite when you listen to it you achieve mercy because it gives life to your heart the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one day he went out with his companions uh, to one of the quarters of medina one of the districts of medina and he sat down with his companions then he said let someone recite the quran for us and he uh, he commanded abdullah ibn mas'ud who is one of the uh, uh, one of the best one of those reciters during the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that has memo that have memorized the quran during the lifetime of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and ibn mas'ud he, he said ya rasulullah am i to recite the quran to you while it was it was to you that it was revealed he said yes i want to hear it from uh, he said yes because i want to hear it from uh, another person from somebody else and ibn mas'ud he recited and he recited from the beginning of surah to nisa up to about uh three quarters of a hisp and then when he reached a certain uh, ayah of the quran uh how will your situation be when we bring out uh, a witness from every nation and we bring you we come forth with you as a witness against these your community and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said stop there stop there and he was crying so the kind of impact that the quran brings to a person it brings mercy it makes your heart it softens your heart and part of the meanings of mercy is gentleness it gives you gentleness it opens for you the gates of having excellent and good character because good character comes from gentleness as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam described the people of yemen that they are people who are gentle who have got wisdom and the people and another people those who are normally associated with rearing camels that they are harsh in their behavior and harshness is to be avoided because we saw that part of the mercy of allah is that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is lenient and gentle yeah. so recitation of the quran it brings that leniency and that gentleness that that is required in a human being especially those who will be in positions of leadership those who will be in positions of leadership they are the ones that are most in need of this kind of character so that they will not deal with people tyran uh, 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 with, with tyranny and terror because people in positions of leadership they normally have power and power when it is misused it becomes tyranny and tyranny is an act uh, that brings instability in the whole order of creation so you can see how listening to the quran uh, makes us to achieve mercy among the uh, among the means that lead us to achieve in the mercy of allah tbaraka wa taala is uh given the zakah even though giving zakah is part of obedience to allah and his messenger is also part of uh, do, uh of doing taqwa of observing taqwa but it is singled out because of the intense love that allah has put between a human being and his wealth allah tbaraka wa taala said innal insana khuliqa halwa اذا مسه الشر جزوعا واذا مسه الخير منوعا man has been created with strong covetousness that is he so much loves what he has and he doesn't want to part with it at all this is part of the creation part of the character of a human being man has been created like that when evil befalls him he is uh, he is weak and he is full of complaints and when good comes to him he withholds he doesn't want to give he doesn't want even people to realize that he has got something that is good that is the nature of human being uh, except those who are purified that is why zakah is called a purification because it purifies the heart 
from this covetousness, from this evil character of a human being that is firmly embedded in his character, except the one who fights it. And it is also a protect, a purification for his wealth, a purification for his wealth. So uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مَا يُنْفِقُ قُرُبَاتٍ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَصَلَوَاتِ الرَّسُولِ عَلَىٰ إِنَّهَا قُرْبَةٌ لَهُمْ سَيُدْخِلُهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي رَحْمَتِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Among the Bedouin Arabs, there are those who take what they spend in the course of Allah, what they give of the zakah. They take it to be a means of drawing near to Allah and a means of having benefit from receiving the prayers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says, verily, certainly, it is a means of drawing near to Allah and Allah will soon make them enter into his mercy. He says, Sayyudhiluhum Allahu fi rahmati. Allah will surely make them enter his mercy. So this is a, a, a guarantee from Allah, a security, that if you give the zakah with sound intention, intention of drawing near to Allah, an intention of having the benefit of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praying on you, which is also part of sincerity, then definitely you are giving the good, good tidings that Allah will make you enter into his mercy. Allah will make you enter into his mercy. You will obtain his mercy. So this is very, very significant for us. And uh, in connection with this, is the uh, we can see, uh, we can understand the practice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what he does when people bring their zakat to him so that he will distribute to those who are in need he used to do salah on them. He used to do a prayer of uh, mercy on them. Uh, Ibn Abi Awfa, when he brought his uh, zakat to him, he said, Allahumma salli ala Ali Abi Awfa. Oh Allah, give sal do a uh, uh, bless and sh give, uh, give your uh, mercy to Abu Talha, uh, uh, Ibn Abi Awfa and his family. So uh, it shows... Uh, uh, what the Allah has said in the Quran that the ones who give the zakat with sincerity, <clears throat> they will enter into the mercy of Allah Tabarak wa Taala. Among the means that will make us achieve the mercy of Allah is seeking Allah's forgiveness a lot. Seeking Allah's forgiveness a lot, uh, because uh, Allah in informing us about the practices of the prophets of Allah, about the histories of the prophets of Allah, he showed to us how they guided their people to the right path. Oh, he mentioned to us in the story of the prophet of Allah, Saleh, he says, uh, Saleh, alayhi salam, he said, uh, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says, uh, he, he said, uh, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ ثَمُودَ أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا فَإِذَا هُمْ فَرِيقَانِ يَخْتَصِمُونَ قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ لِمَا تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ بِالْسَيِّئَةِ قَبْلَ الْحَسَنَةِ لَوْ لَا تَسْتَغْفِرُونَ اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Allah says when we sent uh, the, to the people of Thamud, their brother, their clansman, Salih, then they became two opposing factions, fighting among themselves, that is, uh, in conflict, conflicting among themselves. A party that believes in the prophet of Allah and another party that did not believe. So, uh, Salih alayhi salam, among the things that he tells his people, Why will you not seek the forgiveness of Allah so that you will obtain the mercy of Allah? So he is exhorting them to do istighfar so that they will receive the mercy of Allah. And as we know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has institutionalized for us the practice of doing istighfar. He has institutionalized it in our life. He has done it in several ways. Part of this institutionalization of istighfar is that uh, we do istighfar every day, a hundred times. 
a hundred, a hundred times. Abdullah ibn Umar, he said, we used to count for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In one session, sitting down in one session, he will be doing istighfar a hundred times. Rabbi gfirli wa tub alayya innaka anta tawabur rahim wal gafu. Oh Allah, forgive me and accept my repentance. You are the one who accepts repentance. You are the merciful and you are the forgiving. He used to do that. And he, 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 he even commanded us. He said, oh people, seek the forgiveness of your Lord because I turn to him, I seek his forgiveness and turn to him in repentance every day, a hundred times. This is one of the ways of institutionalization. He also institutionalized for us that whenever we do the prayer, the five each of the five daily prayers, whenever we do assalamu alaikum for from our prayer, the first thing we do is to do istighfar. We say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. And when we start our prayer, we open with the uh, with the du'a ul istifta. That is the prayer for opening the salah. After doing the takbiratul ihram, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to pray, O oh Allah, uh, turn, uh, uh, separate between me and my evil, uh, between me and my sins, like you have separated between the east and the west. O oh Allah, purify me from my sins in the same way that you prefer that you clean, clean me from my cleanse me from my sins, just like you cleanse the white garment from dirt. O oh Allah, wash me up, wash off my sins with water and uh, ice and dew. He used to do this before even starting the prayer. So this is uh we are shown that before starting our prayer, we seek Allah's forgiveness, and after prayer, we seek Allah's forgiveness. This is institutionalization of istighfar in our life. And by the time we come to the final leg of our life, by the time we come to the final leg of our life, when we are in our old age, by the time we reach 55 and above, uh, law has been institutionalized for us. Make istighfar something that we are supposed to do so we are saying that we have lived life and uh, only Allah knows what we have done. So we want you, Allah, to forgive us so that we will meet you in the state where we are merciful. Uh, we know it from of Aisha radiallahu anha when she mentioned that when the Surah to Nasr, the chapter of the victory, was revealed Surah, uh, Surah Al-Nasr, the chapter of victory, when it was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when the victory of Allah and uh, and his opening has, uh, has come, and you see people entering the religion of Allah in crowds, then uh, purify the name of your Lord and give thanks to him and seek his forgiveness. He is the one who is oft, repeat, uh, uh, oft forgiving. Uh, he, he is the one who forgives a lot, uh, who, who, who turns in repentance a lot to his slaves. Aisha radiallahu anha said, when this verse was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, I, I, he rarely prays, but that in his ruku and in his sujood, he will say, subhanakallahumma rabbana wa bihamdik, Allahumma gfirli. That is, uh, Allah, I declare your purity, your glory, and uh, thanks to you. Oh Allah, oh my Lord, forgive me. He used to say this, that is following the injunction of the Quran. And uh, we know this verse was an indication to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that his life is coming to an end. So by the time Allah has given someone respite to reach uh, the final uh, cycle of his life, 50, 60 and above, we should, uh, we, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us that istighfar should be institutionalized in our life. We make it as part of our dhikr to be saying a lot, whether in prayer or outside the prayer, Subhanakallahumma Rabbana wa bihamdik, Allahumma kfirli. 
that is glory be to you o allah and uh, and thanks to you o our lord uh, uh, ya, uh o allah forgive me uh and then among the means for achieving the mercy of allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is uh, asking allah's mercy a lot this is the practice of the prophets of allah allah he says regarding musa alayhi salam when he observed what his people have done of open uh, rebellion against allah and saying that they will not believe in allah until they see him with their own naked eyes part of what he said he made a special prayer for himself and his brother he said rabbi firli uh, 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 he says uh, uh, he says for himself and his brother and also those who did not take part in that evil action he said anta waliyuna faghfir lana warhamna wa anta khairul ghafirin you are our patron you are our master you are our ali forgive us and show mercy on us and you are the best of those who show mercy and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he also institutionalized seeking allah's mercy for us during each prayer when we sit down between the first sujood and the second sujood in our prayer he taught us to say allahumma firli warhamni wahdini warzuqni wa'afini warfa'ni wajburni oh allah forgive me show mercy on me uh, enrich me give me uh, salvation from afflictions that is save me from afflictions uh, make me upright after something has broken me and uh, uh, and then uplift me elevate me and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to teach people when they come to when they first accept islam of uh, a prayer which he used to say it joins for us it joins for you the goodness of this world and the goodness of the hereafter he used to teach them uh, and he even used to fold his fingers he will fold them the four fingers he will uh, he will say allahumma firli warhamni wa'afini uh, wahdini warzuqni allahumma firli warhamni wahdini warzuqni he used to count them like that he said these are four oh allah forgive me show mercy on me guide me and bestow sustenance on me and he used to say these joins for you the goodness of this world and the goodness of the hereafter this he used to say for for new muslims so that the moment you accept islam you will be going in the mercy of allah and uh, <clears throat> uh the among the means uh, this is the second to the last the means that will bring about that that will make us obtain mercy of allah tabarak wa ta'ala is uh showing mercy to the creation of allah when you show mercy to allah's creation allah will show mercy upon you because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says arrahimuna yarhamuhum arrahman those who are merciful they will be they will get the mercy of allah arrahman the one who is most merciful he will be merciful to them arrahimun yarhamuhum arrahman those who show mercy they will receive the mercy of arrahman the lord that is most merciful so we have to show mercy to the creation of allah we show mercy to the creation of allah not only to human beings but even to animals and insects the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked he was asked that do we get reward for showing mercy to animals and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said fi kulli dhatika bi yadin ratibatin sadaqa any any creation that has a liver there is sadaqa in that that is there is an act of charity on that let us remember the story told to us by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam of uh of a woman uh who was a prostitute 
so uh, she was from among the children of Israel. One time she was hungry, she was thirsty in the middle of the desert. Then she she met uh, she 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 met a well, and she went down into the well and drank from the water. Then when she came out, she saw a dog. He was panting, and he was in. She he, he, it, it was clear that he uh, the, the dog was uh, it was high, it, it was very thirsty. So she said, "The kind of thirst that I experienced." It is the same kind of thirst that this dog is experiencing. So she went down, she took out her boots and tied it with her head covering. And she uh, put it down into the well and fetched water from the, uh, in, the, in the boots. And she gave the dog the water to drink. And the Prophet wasallam said, Allah was thankful to her for that act that she did and he forgave her. This was a woman, a wayward woman, a woman of adultery, of adultery and fornication, a, a, a prostitute. And this is dealing with a dog. A dog uh, is regarded by many scholars as impure. A dog is one of the animals with which one of the worst examples have been given in the Quran. That is the similitude of the one who learns the signs of Allah and he does not walk by it is like a dog. So he was given, but despite that, since he's a creation of God, and this woman, despite her evil ways, she she had that mercy in her heart for a creation that is not a human being, a creation that is not a human being that has even been described by words that do not make him among the high of the, 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 among those who are high in the creations of God. But because he is a creature, a creature of God, and the Prophet ﷺ has said, anything that has a liver, there is charity in it. Out of that feeling of mercy, she felt he deserved also to be shown mercy. And on account of that, Allah forgave her. Allah showed mercy on her. So what more of us showing mercy? to our fellow human beings, to our fellow human beings that are in need of mercy, that are in need of goodness, that are in need of taking care of their, uh, of their affairs, which, come, which makes us come to the importance of what is the so-called the third sector, the sector uh, that is not after uh, personal profit. That is, the uh, uh, we have the public sector, which is what the, govern the government does. We have the private sector that is after maximizing profit and getting a lot of wealth and making you are in the institutions that you create to be sustained. Uh, you are always, the motive behind what you do is oh, the profit. Then we have the third sector. The third sector is that is the, the sector that is geared towards goodness, goodness, institutions that take care of people. And we have the best of those institutions that uh, have been that has been institutionalized through the history of Islam, that is sustainable, uh, that lives beyond our times, which is the institution of endowment. The institution of al-waqf, the institution of waqf is what institutionalizes showing mercy, mercy to, the, to those who deserve mercy. During the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were described by Jabir. He says, I hardly know of any of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but that he has established a waqf an endowment. So by endowments, you show mercy to those who are in need of mercy. You know, in Istanbul, there are endowments for uh, water that will be fetched and put 
in places where birds will come and drink from the water and eat from the grains. There are endowments for that. They said it is only in the history of Islam that you have the life of somebody covered completely with endowments. He will be given birth, uh, he will be born uh, from uh, a couple that we are married, from receiving assistance from a work, because there is a work for people who are in need of marriage. Then he will be, uh, uh, when the time for delivery comes, he will be delivered in a hospital that is supported by a work. And when uh, his akika, the ram that will be slaughtered for the naming, he will get a ram from a work. That is if, uh, for those who are unable, so that you don't have to bother that your whole life will be covered. He will be educated in a school that is an endowment. And when he became, uh, when uh, he is in need of accommodation, a dormitory, there will be a dormitory for students that is a work. When he becomes a scholar, he will be given a stipend, a salary from a work. He will be, he will be a resident in a house that is a work. When he is ill, he will be treated in a hospital that is a work. When he dies, he will be shrouded in a shroud that is a work. When he is to be carried, he will be carried in uh, 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 in, uh, in the uh, uh, on the on the bed for carrying the dead people. The uh, he, he will be carried on it. That is also a work, and he will be buried in a graveyard that is also a work. So the whole life becomes uh, a life whereby mercy is being shown at each and every stage, and this is what brings down. This is what brings mercy upon the society. It brings mercy to the individuals who are the endowers. It brings mercy to the whole society because the whole society has taken care of the people that are in need to be shown mercy. Therefore, we need to strengthen this kind of institutions so that we will have mercy in our society. We may not be able to institutionalize work but for everybody to do our work. But one way of doing work is through crowdfunding, which is now been done. And we are hoping uh, uh, to very soon that something like this will be launched here in, in our country, whereby people are able with uh, a little amount of money, with 5,000 Naira, uh, 2,000 Naira, they can participate in a joint work. So that by doing so, you are taking part in showing mercy to the creation of Allah Tabarakwata. And by that token, you are contributing in what will bring down mercy upon the society. Then finally, among the means for obtaining the mercy of Allah is by showing special care to the poor and the weak in the society. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, uh, you do not receive victory. You are not given sustenance by Allah, except of on account of the weak among yourselves. Except on account of the weak among yourselves. Uh, <clears throat> Imam al-Bukhari, when he brought this hadith in his uh, compilation of the of the authentic hadith, he said, "Babu man istaana bi du'afai wa salihina fil har." The chapter on the person who seeks help with the weak and the righteous people in war. That is, he seeks their help in praying to Allah that Allah will give him victory in war. He seeks uh, help of Allah by seeking the help of the weak and the righteous servants of Allah in times of war. And uh, the uh, Imam al Nasai, in uh, when he mentioned uh, this hadith, he says, "Inna ma nasru hadhihi al umma bi zaifiha, bi dawatihim, wa salatihim, wa ikhlasihim." The victory of this umma, the victory of this community, the umma of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is with the weak among it, uh, among its members, with the uh, the weak 
by their prayers, by their uh, prayer, uh, by their salah, uh, by their prayers means by their invocation, their dua, by their prayers, and by their sincerity, by their ikhlas. So given special care to the weak in the society is a means for us to achieve uh, mercy of Allah. Now, the essence of this is to realize that we are from uh, from the manifestations of mercy that we started mentioning in our talk. Uh, we are in dire need of the mercy of Allah as individuals and as communities and nations. It is only the mercy of Allah that will give us sustenance and protection. It is only the mercy of Allah that will take care of us and take care of our needs. It is only the mercy of Allah that will protect the world in which we live, that will protect the society in which we live and protect the nation, the country in which we live and protect the whole planet in which we live. It is by the mercy of Allah. Therefore, our need for the mercy of Allah is immense. And uh, part of what we have mentioned are some things that will make us uh, some ways, some of the ways mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, for us to achieve this mercy, both as individuals and as communities. For us as individuals, we are to imbibe these ways and these means and these practices that have been mentioned. For the society, we join together, we, uh, we join together to institutionalize these ways and these means so that the society as a whole will be immersed in the mercy of Allah and the society as a whole will achieve and obtain the mercy of Allah wa ta'ala. And this is not impossible because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has given us the glad tidings that this uh, community of his is like a rainfall. You never know which is the best part of the rainfall. Is it the beginning of the rain or the end of the rainfall? So this community, even towards the end of times, it will still be, it will still have good uh, permeating it. Uh, it will still have good in it till the end of times. Uh, so let us have good opinion of Allah and strive to imbibe these qualities oh, no, sure. them in our society. Um, and Allah knows space. We give our salutations and our blessing uh, and our prayers of blessings to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family and his companions. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, thank you very much. Sheikh, we didn't expect um, any less. You've spoken like a, like a scholar. Um, I didn't actually know what to expect from, from the lecture when you gave us the, the topic or in trust that uh, you always uh, clarify things in a manner that is simple. But from my understanding and for the benefit of those who have listened, I mean, it's a difficult, it's not easy to summarize or it's not necessary to summarize because it's comprehensive. Yeah, that's more like what captures it. But for me, um, there are two basic sections. And the first one is, um, what is the Rahma of Allah? And you, you, you did that like only you could. And then um, establish that we needn't deceive ourselves. Only Allah can give Rahma. Only him can show mercy. Uh, in 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 the in the substantive word, uh, meaning of the of the word, and you went on to des describe the many types of rahma that Allah uh, has has bestowed on mankind that has shown to man, uh, starting with prophethood. That I mean, nobody makes himself a prophet. 
takes Allah to make you a prophet. And it's, it's part of the rahmah of Allah that uh, some people who came to the world have been so designated uh, as prophet. Um, then you went on to talk about rainfall. I mean, the benefit of rainfall, uh, uh, the benefits are better realized when, when there's lack of rain. <laughs> then you understand what it is that um, rainfall does. And then protection of life. People are in the air, people at sea, going through rough times and then not pacifying the sea. And um, reflecting and saying that, you know what, people have destroyed them. Uh, the story that was told to us once of um, people at sea, uh, and the prayer was, oh Allah, we've seen your might. Show us your mercy. It's the same Rahmah that they were begging for, uh, they were pleading for. You've talked about protection of life. Uh, protection of inheritance, five generations, you said. Uh, and Allah kept it for those people, on it, so it was their time to inherit and caused several things to happen until they found themselves uh, uh, within reach of their inheritance. Alhamdulillah. Um, those are many types of rahmah that we can get from Allah. Uh, and that you went on to the second part of the of the lecture, is how do we qualify for Allah's Rama? And um, started with obedience. I mean, if you are going to qualify for the Rama of Allah, then you you, you obey the one that's going to give the Rama. Um, the Americans will say that's a no-brainer. Uh, you have to uh, 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 obey Allah and His Messenger. Obey Allah through the Quran, His Messenger very, very explicit in the Hadith. Uh, the second one is submission to his will and to his judgment. You know, his will, then not questioning his, 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 his judgment at all times. The next one is emulating the character most beloved by Allah. How does Allah want us to behave? And every time we behave that way, he's pleased with us. He shows us his mercy, grants us his mercy. It's all there. Um, uh, he says he's the merciful one. I mean, he loves to show mercy. He loves giving mercy, you know? Um, so we only need to ask for the mercy in, in, through the guidelines that you have uh, given us today. It's like applying for something. Once you follow the process of, uh, for the, of the application, then you are, you are deemed to qualify at the end of the day. The next one is a complete, this one is huge, a complete social reform in finance, in education, in taxation, uh, that would mirror the injunctions in the Quran and the Hadith. In other words, are we able to create the society that Allah uh, wants us to create? A society that is fair, essentially. A society that... Um, extends itself uh, to those who are uh, 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 um, in need. Not an unequal society where there is extreme difference between those who have and those who don't have. Then, taqwa Allah, fearing Allah. I mean, very, very simple. We have, we have to know that our wrongs are being seen, and maybe that's enough reason. And the, 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 the knowledge or the knowing that we are going to be punished for that which we are doing wrongly. We continue to struggle. Um, we are not perfect people. Then listening to the Quran, this is really amazing. Uh, just listening to the Quran, and you describe the Quran itself as a spirit, and that it gives life. Um, not even reading it, but being, re listening to it quietly with, um, with um, um, humility just, uh, 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 and just, just taking it in. Um, that, that is part of what gets us the taqwa of Allah. Uh, then zakat. Again, you come back to society. You describe zakat as a purification. 
um, how those who have a so attached to what they have and are reluctant to give it and learning how to give it and receiving the rahmah of, of, of Allah, but also assisting people, assisting society to be better, I mean, towards a, a better society. Uh, the next one is seeking Allah's forgiveness a lot. And you taught us prayers to seek Allah's forgiveness. Um, saying it as many times as we can say it, just seeking his forgiveness, because if sometimes we sin, and we don't even know that we have sinned, but in continuous seeking of, of Allah's forgiveness, um, this type of sins are, uh, 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 is taken care of. Then you moved on to showing mercy to our last creation and gave us the example of the prostitute who devised uh, a means of fetching water in the desert for, for a panting dog. Um, uh, you elaborated on, on this extensively. And then you went on to the work. And we make endowment. Why do we think we can't make endowment? If we can't make the endowment individually, can we make it collectively? And um, you gave us examples of people who, from conception in the womb till their death, uh, benefited from, from work of. So all this, um, yeah, if I have my children, what would they feed? If I have my children, how would I educate them? How would I care for them? Um, so just an unfair and an unjust society. And um, work of, in addition to the timely payment of zakat, all combined in some of these will, will lead us towards a fairer, uh, uh, more egalitarian, more just uh, society, and thereby um, avail us of the Rahmah of, uh, of Allah. Um, then the last one that you gave was special care to the poor and weak in society. Um, and I guess some of the ones before this will um, even make this particular one easier uh, 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 for us. Yes, the challenge that we have is that we are not um, in a society that has only one, one religion, but as much as possible, if we can do this, other people might actually see that, you know what, this is fair, this is, this is right, and then um, these kind of things are, I, I, I don't know many people who don't want to emulate what is, uh, what is good. But um, I want to thank you on behalf of the listeners today um, for the, I mean, that's why we keep coming back to you, um, coming back to you to, to lead us in the direction of, um, of Allah so that we can uh, benefit from his Rahmah uh, uh, in this world and in the hereafter. Thank you very much. I also want to say to you that today, at peak, you addressed 925 people. And I was getting worried that um, we might actually get, actually get to the limit of uh, 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 1,000 that we, we paid for. So um, it's also a reflection on the task for knowledge, just like that dog in the desert that people have. And that's why we have continued to um, make this platform available and accessible to those who attend it. I want to thank so many people who are, I was able to identify on the platform. It's not a place to um, identify governors or identify... Uh, 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 chairman of corporations. No, it's a place where we have um, said to ourselves that there will be equity and um, uh, equality on the, on the platform. And that's why when I ran into trouble with the, with the system today, uh, I walked my way through and we had a, a very good uh, lecture as part of um, lessons in patience that we keep learning in this. Um, we now come to question time. We have a very, we don't have too many questions, strangely, but understandably too, because the lecture has been extremely, um, um, it's been very clear. There's much clarity in it. The first question is, uh, if you can hear me still. Yes. Yes. The first question is, I am curious about the relationship between establishing obedience to Allah 
and social engineering. If we practice Islam, our, so our social protocol should be strengthened. So what are we missing? With so many Muslims in leadership, can the speaker touch on this a bit? Are we uh, uh, losing out on Rahma? What says are we missing Rahma in this case? The second one, um, I have heard other scholars say that interest on paper money is not riba, as referenced to in the Holy Quran. Interest on paper money is no river as referenced in the Holy Quran. Others further said that even if so considered as riba, it is permissible under principle of necessity as part of Allah's rahma. May our eminent scholar kindly explain further his understanding of this rahma. Those are the two questions. Uh, to quote you, they can form the, the basis of another lecture, but um, I know you try to answer them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa ala Sayyidina Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Now, <clears throat> the uh, establishing obedience and uh, the question of social engineering. Uh, both aspects, you know, we are uh, the there is definitely a challenge here, but the challenge lies in the fact that have we really, are we in have we have we have we actually established obedience to Allah and His Messenger? Uh, let us look at our uh, at our relationships and at our uh, observance of the injunctions of Allah in our social lives. Uh, so many things are missing. Uh, the simple practice, for example, just as a matter of example, a simple practice of uh, doing marriage counseling before, con before consummating a marriage, before going into a marriage contract, is absent in most of our societies. Uh, so you find young people going into marriage without knowing the rights of one another, the rights of one another upon the other party. And uh, it is not, uh, you find many marriages breaking down within the first few months of the marriage. And uh, uh, this is not because of, uh, uh, it's not because of uh, polygamy or something like that. No, uh, just because of uh, ignorance of the, uh, of the rules. And if we are ignorant of the rules, we will not be able to uh, show obedience the way it is. The aspect of social engineering is indeed very, very wide. And uh, as far as we are concerned as Muslims, uh, what we, if, if we take the laws, if we take the laws of, uh, the, laws of the Sharia in terms of our social dealings, and then look at the uh, the, the changes that society has witnessed and uh, the new occurrences that are there in our society, and we'll see how we'll adopt them to the rules of the Sharia. We are, uh, 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 everything will be, uh, will be, will be well off. And uh, uh, there is no doubt that you need a political will for you to be able to do that. Uh, for instance, uh, part of what I mentioned in my brief profile uh, was uh, what we did in Kano under the 14th uh, Emir, uh, Emir Muhammad Sunusi the second, of coming up with a draft uh, code of uh, personal status for Muslims, a draft uh, uh, Muslim personal status code. Uh, this is supposed to bring near to us the, the Sharia in practice at the level of family and family aspects and uh, upbring uh, and upbringing and uh, the question of guardianship, uh, gifts, wills and testaments and even work so that when these things, uh, well, this is one stage of institutionalizing these kind of things in modern times. That is, you get 
you get the you get you get them into a law so that it has the strength of a law because as the as Sayyidina Uthman used to say Allah he eradicates with the power of the authority what he does not eradicate with the sermons that are there in the Quran so the sermons of the ulama and what are mentioned of sermons in the Quran and the sunnah they will be complemented by the power of the law and that is what we need to have an effective uh, positive social engineering in our society we are definitely in need of that because of the way uh, the society is moving so fast with the advancements and also the permeating influence of other cultures and also the, the permeating influence of the dominant culture of technique in itself uh, this the only way for us to be protected in our society is by uh, having the strength of the law that supports our uh, our rules of social life and uh, alhamdulillah in a, in a country like nigeria the nigerian constitution recognizes the uh, the muslim law of personal status so uh, the only thing is to uh, come up with this codification and then see how it will uh, see how it will address the challenges of modern life the new occurrences which the ulama alhamdulillah we have uh, we are blessed to have ulama in our society that can uh, that are able to uh, uh, to adapt the sharia to modern times and bring rulings for new occurrences uh, <clears throat> i hope i have uh, answered some way your question uh, it was a bit uh, uh, as uh, as the chairman said, it is self uh, you know a topic of uh, of another lecture definitely. Then the qu second question regarding interest, that some scholars have the opinion that there is no interest on paper money, uh, uh, the interest on paper money is not riba, uh, and that even if it is riba by the rules of necessity, then it will have to uh, uh, the Sharia will uh, would allow it because what becomes a general need. Uh, it reaches the level of necessity. They say al al darura. That is a general need of the society is regarded as a necessity. Uh, now, it is true that some scholars did have that opinion, and some they still they they still do. But uh, these are uh, opinions that uh, number one they are as. Uh, 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 they are a very little minority and many of those who hold that opinion they have uh, grown out of it secondly an opinion that clearly goes against the the principles of the sharia uh, is not regarded as a difference of opinion but is regarded as shad it is regarded as uh, uh, it is regarded as a diversion it is regarded as a misnomer it, 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 uh, i mean it is regarded as something that is offshoot you know, people do hold opinions that are offshoot and they are not regarded as, they are not given recognition. When uh, something goes clearly against a verse of the Quran or a clear analogy, for instance, if you say that riba only applies to gold and silver and does not apply on paper money, you might as well say that zakat does not apply on paper money because it's not gold and silver. And anybody who says so, we know that this is an offshoot. This is uh, this is uh, uh, swerving away from the path. This occurs. You see, Abdullah ibn Abbas, he held an opinion that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he married his wife Maymuna while in the state of Ihram, and everybody go uh, and everybody contradicted him in that. Ibn Abbas he had the opinion that temporary marriage is permissible, and we have clear text of hadith of the Prophet sallallahu that have prohibited temporary marriage. Because it is quite possible that a companion may hold an opinion out of not knowing a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam because eminent personal, eminent companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam they missed out on some sayings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and they were only able to learn about them from second uh, from second from third parties 
They didn't get to hear it directly from the Prophet Sallallahu but they had the hadith from another source. So it is quite possible, even at the level of the companions, that somebody may hold an opinion and that opinion is not given recognition because it has swerved away, it has gone against, uh, it has, uh, it is, uh, uh, it, be, it has become uh, what they call an, uh, in, in usul al uh, 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 al that is going against the what is preponderant and what is uh, established. The uh, assembly of Muslim juries of the world, that is the Islamic Fiqh Academy, that is under the uh, the World Muslim League, the one that is under the Organization of Islamic Congress, uh, the Organization of Islamic Conference, the OIC, both these eminent bodies that bring together fuqaha uh, jurists from all parts of the Muslim world, of, of the Muslim world, they are unanimous in saying that riba applies to paper money just as it applies to gold and silver. Secondly, regarding the rule of necessity, uh, it is true that a general need is treated as a necessity. That is when every, when a need, it affects everyone, then that need is regarded as the level of necessity. You know, necessity is a level higher than need, and need is a level higher than embellishments. Now, need uh, is when you are, uh, a need is given consideration when you are going to, exper to experience uh, severe constriction and inability and, uh, and harshness in doing a thing. But necessity is something which without it, you'll not be able to live. So when a need, uh, uh, when a hardship becomes, affect, affects every single person in the society and it becomes a general need, then that need is regarded as a necessity. But there is another rule that says uh, a need is supposed to be measured according to its true position. So will definitely will this a need will only be regarded as a need when there is no alternative. But now with the presence of alternatives, with the economic, uh, with the financial engineering that has been done to create instruments of uh, of finance that do not uh, uh, that give alternative to interest based lending and interest based financing and interest based dealings there is no question of necessity here because necessity will be will mean there is no alternative for instance when you are in the when you don't have anything to eat except carry on when you have when you are choked by a thorn and you don't have anything to drink to make the thorn go down except alcohol, except a beer, then you will take it. That is when you don't have anything. But when you have, uh, when you are choked or when you are hungry, you are about to die, and there is uh, 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 there is dead flesh, and then there is uh, another which you are not used to 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 taking uh, goat meat, but there is chicken, except that the chicken is halal. But the 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 dead meat is uh, uh, which is haram is beef. So you can't say that you out of necessity you'll have to take beef before you because you have an alternative. So now that the Islamic financial institutions have established that we have alternative to interest based dealings, there is no question of saying that there is necessity now. Necessity definitely does not apply. You may say need to some extent, but the need also is not general. Because we have so many people assessing, access, uh, assessing financing from these institutions and also putting their deposit in these institutions without the need to deal with uh, interest-based financing. So uh, uh, the, the, uh, 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 what they call al waqe that is the, the context, the reality of our situation, it defies what is being uh, what is being uh, uh, play. Uh, what is being presented as a necessity. Uh, so to be honest, there is no necessity in this. And also this minority opinion that has been exp uh, uh, expressed, it is countered by what is regarded as a collective ishtihad that is almost uh, a, a consensus to be regarded. Uh, we are not saying that it is a consensus, but when something is done collectively at that level, 
that brings together people from different countries, then it becomes something like a consensus. This was what the Khulafa or Rashidin used to do. When an issue comes up, they will gather the eminent Sahaba in Medina. This is this does not mean that there are others uh, that they are the only Sahaba in the in the community because there are there are others in Kufa, others in Basra, others in Egypt, and so on. But the ones in Medina, they are the ones that come together and take a position, and then that position is given the strength of the support of the political authority. Like when they differed regarding uh, someone who wakes up, someone who wakes up in the morning, he is in a state of impurity. He has janaba. Will his fasting be valid or will it not be valid? And uh, they used to say Abu Huraira and some companions, they used to say that his, his fasting is invalid. So when it was taken to the authorities, they gathered, they sent to the wives of the Prophet wasallam to get to know to the root of the cause. And the wives of the Prophet wasallam said that, yes, the Prophet wasallam used to come, uh, used to wake up after dawn and he will be in a state of janaba and he will fast on that day. So based on that, they said that nobody should go against this opinion again and express a contrary opinion. So these things do happen. Uh, it may not be a complete consensus, but is a, it is a preponderant view of the majority of the scholars that interest applies to paper money just as it applies to gold and silver, and just as uh, and it also applies to those cryptocurrencies that are that are regarded also as currency because the illa the uh, the raison d'etre that is the, uh, the 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 basis behind the judgment is that what is whatever is regarded as a store of value and as a medium of exchange that uh, the rules of riba will apply to it just as they apply to gold and silver that we are at one time the media of exchange Allah ta'ala a'la. Thank you very much. Um, we have two choices, but because I'm not taking, uh, I would like the Sheikh to be the representative of the platform to select which one. I have only six questions left, uh, but it's three minutes to noon, and noon is always when we end. We can extend this by just not more than 10 minutes, I pass the six questions to you, and you um, answer them as much as you can, or we can just end now, which is the promise to the platform. What will you choose on their behalf? Yeah, I think 10 minutes is OK. <laughs> we can Thank take 10 minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Number one, the emphasis on Allah never showing his rahma to the one who practices shirk and perhaps those who always innovate with bid. Can this be addressed by you brief, briefly, sir? Number two, what kind of Rahma of Almighty Allah can the Ummah expect from Gaza situation, issues in Gaza? How could we help people in Gaza, of Gaza and other Muslim Ummah that are facing difficulties, especially during this month. That's number three. Number four, can I recite the name of Allah, Ya Rahman, consistently as part of gaining the Rahma of Allah? Number five, I would like Malam to know that I love him for the sake of Allah, and I follow a lot of his teachings online. That is not a question. Uh, but somebody is passing his affection to, to you. And the last one, please recite or repeat the duas of the prophet after the revelation of Surah Al-Nasir for seeking forgiveness. Um, there are more questions that came that got the list, but I think we've settled this. Um, perhaps at the next lecture we will learn. Um, as the lecturer. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, regarding the question of uh, uh, shirk and bid'ah and that uh, the, the, uh, the exclusion of uh, those who are in shirk or in bid'ah 
from gaining uh, from getting the mercy of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala uh yes Allah has said uh in uh, regarding this in surah al-a'raf he said wa rahmati wasi'at kulli shay fa sa'tubuha lil ladina yattaquna wa yu'tuna az-zakaa wal ladina hum bi ayatina yu'minun my mercy encompasses everything but i will make it i, I, I will uh, i will put it or i will uh, I, I will in uh, it is the it is those who fear allah and give out the zakah and those who believe in my signs that will be that will have the prerogative of getting that mercy so this definitely precludes those who are doing shirk because allah does not accept does not forgive someone uh, does not uh, for, forgive the activity the action of shirk until the person repents and if he dies in shirk he will be precluded from getting the mercy of allah uh, that is why the names of allah are, are regarding mercy the two names of allah regarding mercy which we always always say uh, ar rahman that is the one whose mercy encompasses everything that is in this world everything it uh, it is encompassed by the mercy of allah while we are in this world but in the hereafter he is the one who is the most merciful with a boundless mercy but it is specific to only those whom he uh, by his will because they have followed his will they are the ones that will be bestowed uh, the, uh, that, that the mercy will be bestowed upon them so uh, the things that preclude somebody from achieving from getting the mercy of allah they are shirk and also innovation because in shirk uh, there is no taqwa because the greatest act of taqwa of fearing allah is to fear allah regarding associating partners with him because when you do that you are impinging on the right of allah you are not giving allah his due and also in innovation when you engage in innovation you are uh, precluding yourself from obedience to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and as we said obedience to allah and obedience to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, is the key to achieving uh, the mercy of allah tabarak wa ta'ala so I think that uh, uh, because we are talking on the means to achieve it, uh, not those that will negate the mercy of Allah. I was being, uh, uh, I was looking at the positive aspect, but this also, yes, it is. Uh, it's quite right. It's a very, a very valid observation uh, regarding our situation in Gaza. Uh, how do we show? Uh, how does the question of Rahma applies to them? Uh, the the, uh, the situation in in, in Gaza is uh, uh, is indeed uh, a catastrophe and is indeed a serious calamity and is a shame on uh, on the international community that this thing is happening uh, and as as ordinary Muslims uh, what we can do is quite limited uh, and uh, the best that we can do is to is to do prayers on them because even what used to ob uh, obtain in earlier situations when there are these kinds of attacks on the Palestinians, one way or the other, you find a way whereby aid is being sent to them. But now, even to send aid to them, it's become a serious challenge. There is no way that you can send it. And even those who are able to send it, they are the ones uh, that are supporting the state of Israel. Then in another way, they said that because of the shame that the international community is facing, that we have to send aid to Gaza. Mm -hmm. Now, this kind of situation, it makes you feel helpless. But this helplessness is a situation in which Allah accepts dua. Because the one who is in a state of extreme need, his prayer is always acceptable by Allah. So the greatest thing that we'll do to show mercy uh, to the people of Gaza is to uh, include them in our prayers at all times so that Allah will, will send his help upon them because we know that things are in the hands of Allah and he's the one who is almighty and he's the one who is all-powerful and he is the one who is able to save them 
from uh, the tyranny of uh, that the, uh, the, that they are experiencing. Uh, the next question, the, the other one, the question of can we somebody say Ya Rahman uh, in order to gain Rahma? Uh, reciting the name of Allah itself, uh, uh, yes, it has a basis because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say Alivu Biyad al Jalali wal Ikram. That is, uh, uh, say a lot Ya al Jalali wal Ikram. That is, make your tongue always saying Ya al Jalali wal Ikram. So Ya Rahman is one of the way, names of Allah, just like Ya Dal Jalali Wal Ikram is one of the names of Allah. And if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has chosen this name, that you say it often uh, for you to get to get uh to get uh answers to your prayer, you might as well say Ya Rahman. But it is always better to say uh, to say it at the end of the prayer, that is to do a tawassul with it. Like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he taught Abu Bakr uh, when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu asked him what should he what should he say as his prayer while in in salah, he said he should say Allahumma inni zalam tu nafsi dulman kathira wa la yafiru dhunuba illa ant faqfir li maqfirat min indik warhamni inna ka anta al ghafur rahim. Oh Allah, I have wronged myself uh, seriously, immensely. I have wronged myself no. immensely. And nobody forgives sins except you. Therefore, forgive my sins and bestow your mercy on me. Bestow mercy on me. Inna ka antal ghafuru rahim. You are the one who is most forgiving, who is most merciful. So he mentions ar rahim. So you can normally you mention the names of Allah at the end of dua and also in the beginning. You can say ya rahman irhamni. But as I mentioned in the lecture, there are many prayers that are directly addressed for you to get the mercy of Allah, like the ones between the two prostrations, Allahumma firli warhamni wahdini wa'afini warzuqni wajburni. Uh, then the last uh, question, it's uh, uh, the dua that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu used to do after the Surah to Nasr was revealed on him. It is Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika Allahumma firli. Subhanakallahumma rabbana wa bihamdika Allahumma firli. Subhanakallahumma rabbana wa bihamdik Allahumma firli. That is glory be to you, O Allah, our Lord, and uh, thanks to you, O, o Allah, forgive me. So uh, this, I have come to the, uh, to the uh, seven in total. Yes, you have. Thank you very much. And like I said, I acknowledge that um, we are not going to cover all the questions today. Uh, we don't want to get into the habit of dragging a promise 10 to 12 to becoming something totally different. But we will take them with um, uh, Sheikh um, Lemu when we meet next week Sunday. Uh, I thank you very much. Even at question time, we, we still have about 830, 840 people on the, on the platform. Um, thank you. Can you say the closing prayer for us before we go and... Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barik ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allah, we ask you to forgive you, give us our sins and accept our uh, fasting and accept our tarawih and accept of our, all our good acts. We ask you, Allah, to show, bestow your mercy upon us. Uh, give us a mercy in this world and give us a mercy when we enter at the, at, our, at the point of our death. Give us, show, bestow your mercy on us while we are in our graves. Bestow your mercy on us when you when we rise up from our graves. Bestow your mercy on us when we are on the path that will take us to paradise. Bestow your mercy on us for us to enter the paradise and um, make us high stations in paradise. We ask Allah, to, Allah, we ask you to show your mercy on us to remove all the hardships that we have been experiencing in our country and uh, make our economy right. And we ask you, Allah, to remove hunger and hardship from our society. Uh, Allah, we ask you to take care of us and protect us from the evils of banditry, kidnapping, and all the other evils that we are experiencing. O oh Allah, we ask you to protect our brothers in Gaza and send your help and succor to them and give them victory over their enemies. 
for Allah, we ask you to take care of them and take care of their needs and give them protection and shelter. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sami'u al-alim wa tub alayna innaka anta al-tawabu al-rahim. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nasafiru wa natubu ilayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdulillahi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Well, that is the... That is the end. We'll see you on Sunday next week at 10. And I will have um, gone to school to learn a bit more about how not to run into technical breach. Jazakumullah wa khaira. Bye bye. Jazakumullah wa khaira. Bye bye, son. May Allah bless you. I know. I Thank God for this opportunity to my see.
I said it's not now. The next will bring light. Also, part of the party. Okay, Nini Pam Sunday.
Let me call it. Il faut qu'il a fait ceci, il faut qu'on va se donner à la grande électorie. Si on va se donner à la grande électorie, on ne sait pas qu'il faut qu'il soit. Oui, on ne sait pas. A tout le monde, il y a des filles, on ne va pas faire de la foi à Christian. On ne va pas faire de la foi à Christian. Et je vais lâcher. 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 Let me hear you, my dear. Come on, 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 come
Badija, when I tried it, I can win on it. Oh.
So The truth is the 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 and then he told the people that the music was done. He told the people the music was done. Where the source of this beautiful sound was not happening. We're going to take a short break and talk about that. When we come back, we'll get you the rest of the story and we'll continue discussing. Uh, we help by it, inshallah, uh, so stick around, inshallah, we'll be right back. <laughs> To help the others. So, why not help others to accept that it's worldwide? Take part in helping spread the authentic message of this amazing Quran and the Sunnah to us with Christ and the TV. Don't miss this unique opportunity to gain the rewards of the Quran. So he commanded people in his palace to stop saying, they told him to read. He called his children to read it. He said, I want you to find out where this voice is coming from. He said, what word? And then they heard the voice. 
and it was done. They would hear it and they would just it. He said that. He went up to the window to listen. The voice was so beautiful. So he said the list, they went out to find the source of this voice. And he's sitting there waiting and he started to wake up. And finally they come back and they track the voice to a young twin man. He's deep in the And he was standing and he fell off. He was just afraid to lost the time of God and decided to come So they brought him to his noble man, to his side of the world. So they caught hold of the man and he was trying to pray. They took it out and said, We need to take you. And they did. Because he was drinking. He said, he was drinking so much. He said, that's the, the voice of the preacher. He was returning for time in the masjid. He found a prayer in the masjid, one of the salahs in the midst of the night. And we decided to bring it to you because you asked us to bring it. So this noble man, he tells his servants his, his people to me. And he talks to his man and he says, what is it that you are saying to us? I heard your voice. What are you saying to what will you recite? So the noble man asked him to recite, and this poor young man started to recite the act from different verses from different places. He said, I will be down here, said, come to me. Who are you talking about? He's a young man. Verily, those who have cut for the divisions will be in a beautiful garden. A beautiful garden. He started reciting various ayats about the people from different places in the world. على الأرائك ينظرون تعريفا في وجوههم